Hello students, this is Brock Skaggs, and I'm going to make this video show an example of how to solve a vector problem using graphical techniques. And specifically, our vector problem is going to be to determine the magnitudes of two vectors where we know the directions, but we do not know their magnitudes. And so the kinematics part of this is we're dealing with a four bar uh, mechanism. Um, if you've already watched the analytical example, we'll solve the exact same problem here, except we're not going to do as many hand calcs. Um, we're instead going to rely on, in this case, AutoCAD to help us lay out the vectors and solve the vector equation for us. And so with that being said, uh, I've already done a little bit of prep work in order to get ready for this lecture. Uh, one thing I've done in AutoCAD has been to create a couple layers. Uh, specifically, I've got a known vector layer in yellow and an unknown vector layer in this light blue color. And so we'll use that uh, to identify what vectors we know all the information about and vectors that we only know part of the information about. And so in this particular example, my three vectors that I'm working with are velocity b here, velocity c here, and velocity c relative to b in the middle here. Now the vector that I know everything about is this guy right here, uh, v sub b. You can see down here in my note that the magnitude is 8 times pi, which is roughly 25.1327. Uh, units here are going to be inches per second. And then the direction is in the same direction that I've drawn this line here. And so at this point, we're just working on the, the vector part of it, not really um, so much worried about how I'm coming up with these arrows and the directions they're pointing, uh, but just to accept the fact that that's pointing in the correct direction. And so this guy, we know the length of it, 25.1327, and we also know it's pointed along this line. As far as the lengths go right now of those arrows, uh, they're not necessarily meant to characterize the magnitude of the vectors, uh, but we're just put there so we could have the direction and the illustration for the beginning part of this problem. And so this guy we know everything about. We do know it's going down into the left. These two, we only know the line of action of the directions, if you will. And so what I mean by that is if I come in here and draw just a construction line to illustrate, we know that the velocity of c relative to v lies somewhere along that line. But we don't know if it points down into the right or up into the left just yet. And we don't know its magnitude. We just know, hey, it's going to lie somewhere along this line. Same thing with the velocity of c, this vector over here. We know that it's going to lie along this line here. Oops, oops, I was off just a little bit on that line. Let's go ahead and clear that. I'll try that again. Snap to the front and end of that arrow. And so we know v sub c is going to lie somewhere along this line, which gives us the direction, but we don't necessarily know the sense. By the sense, I mean whether it's pointing down to the left or up into the right. And of course, we don't know the magnitude. And so with that, what we have to do to get started is make some assumptions. Here I'm making the assumption that v c relative to b is pointing down, and v sub c is pointing down and to the left here. What will happen is it will become very apparent when we're working through this vector equation whether those are in the correct directions or not. And so how we start this out is by starting off with our known vector. And so we know this vector v sub b. And so what I'm going to do, since I'm on the known vector line, or no vector layer, is I'm going to draw a line segment here to represent v sub b. And so I'll just start the line tool, L enter there, and then I'm going to use my parallel tool here to snap a line parallel to that vector arrow. Uh, that gets me the direction, as you can see, and then I just need to put in the magnitude, so 25.1327 here. And so this line segment here represents v sub b. And so I'll do some quick work here in order to get this a little bit better. Um, here I'm going to put a small little arrowhead on it in order to determine where's the beginning and where's the end of this vector. Because when I'm doing vector addition graphically, I need to know which one's the tip and which one's the tail. And so there's that part. And then let's also put a little tag here just so I make sure that I remember that this is v sub b. And so here, I'll come here, edit the M text, make it a little bigger, and then flop the layer here. And so going relatively quickly, um, but all I'm really doing is doing some AutoCAD features here in order to make this thing a little bit more easily visible. And so now this 
line segments here in yellow does represent the velocity vector at point B. So this V sub B vector, notice we know the direction of it as well as the magnitude. But these other two vectors, we only know the directions of. And so what I'll do is I'll come in here to my unknown vector layer. And so now I'm going to look at my vector equation and say, well, to do vector arithmetic, I take this V sub B and then I add to it the velocity of C relative to B. And so here, to add to it, I've got to do tip to tail addition. And so I need a line segment here that is going to be in the same direction as V C relative to B. And so that's where we're going to use that same tool to create a line parallel to this arrow, because that arrow again is already in the correct direction. And so I've got my line tool started. I'm hovering over it so I can snap to it. Then I come over here. I'm snapping to it. And at this point, I don't know the length of this line. That's the whole part of the problem is to figure out the length of this line or the magnitude of that V C relative to V vector. And so to get us started, I'm just going to put a value here. Um, I'll put in 10 and hit enter. And so at this point, I know it lies somewhere on this line, so I'm going to think of it as pointing in the direction that we are assuming here. So that's going down into the right a little bit. And so this would be where the arrowhead would go, and this would be the tail end. And so I'm just going to type M enter for move. I'll select the object, I'll select the very back end as the base point, and then if I want to play vector addition down here, I put the tail section near the tip section of this one and place it just like so. And then I'll copy over this over here, make a new label, because this is C relative to B. And so put that in the subscript. And then we'll also flip the layer to unknown here. And so at this point we are in pretty good shape. Uh, this is what we're thinking is the head or tip of this vector, but we haven't got that confirmed yet. And so the next thing we do is we look back up at our vector equation. We basically have the right hand side figured out, but now the left hand side, the resultant, that's going to be V sub C. And so at this point we need a line that's going to be running parallel to this V sub C vector line. And so here I'm just starting the line tool again. I'll go parallel. I'll hover over that line associated with the arrow, so I can snap parallel to it. There it is. And I'll just type in 10 here as well. And so here I'm thinking of this being the tail, and here's the tip, so I'll grab a hold of the tail, and go to move it, and I'm going to put that with the tail of my first vector here, uh, just like you would do in regular vector addition, right? Uh, the resultant of these two vectors would start at the tail end of the first vector and go to the tip of the last vector. And so the way you solve this vector addition is you look for where these lines are going to intersect. And so the yellow line we know is correct. Uh, the blue line here, we think it's going to go down into the right. And if we extend off the blue line here, we're going to have an intersection right in this neighborhood, and so that's what you need to be looking for. And so to get that to intersect and still maintain the angle, I'm going to use the command extend inside of AutoCAD, and so I'll hit enter after getting it selected. Um, if you notice in the bottom right it says select the boundary condition, so the boundary is going to be this line. I'll hit spacebar to finish that selection, and then it's wanting me to select the object to extend. That is this line here, and it's basically going to grow that line segment. At this point we can now trim so I'll hit TR enter for trim. I'll select this line because that's going to be my cutting edge. Hit spacebar, select this line segment here, and it's going to remove it. And so now we have basically formed this triangular shape here, which coincides with this vector equation. And so I'll move this up just like so. And so let's go ahead and blow this up so we can see it a little bit better. move it over here. And so this is the vector equation we're working with. And so V sub B is right here. The vector V C relative to B is right here. Uh, if I want to, I can now draw in the arrowhead. So it's going to have a little arrow here. And we'll mirror it across. There we go. And so we now know that V C relative to B does indeed point down into the right. 
And so here we're just following the tip to tail addition, and then the V sub C has to start at the beginning of V sub B, and it goes to the end here. And so its head is going to be right here. I'm sure we'll just accept that. We'll mirror it across. And that arrow will sit just like so. And then I'll copy this over here. And this longer arrow is going to be V sub C. And that's the actual true vector here, because now we're encompassing both magnitude as well as direction, whereas up here on the diagram we were just showing the directions there. And so at this point we should have all the information needed to uh, solve for it. Uh, if you just click on one of these line segments, it'll show you the dimensions. You can see uh, 26.5 roughly units there. Uh, that would be in inches per second if we were uh, following the application of this example. And we also know it's pointing downward and to the left, and we already know the angle from the diagram. Uh, similarly with VC relative to B, roughly 3.47, uh, 3.5 to just go to one decimal place. And it's pointing downward and to the right there. Um, also, you could obviously use the dimension tools here if you didn't want to just read off of the properties here. And so I can come in here if I wanted to to put the dimension. I could play with the dim styles in order to enlarge that if I needed to. Uh, but this would be an example of uh, solving this vector equation graphically. Um, one of the key things is you just obey the laws of uh, vector addition. So in my case, I think of it always as tip to tail addition. And then remember what the resultant is. And then look for where these unknown lines are going to be intersecting here. And so one of the things you noticed about this uh, specific example is that I assumed the correct directions for both of these cases. And that's not always going to be the case. It's not always going to be uh, that you're going to get that lucky, so to speak. And so I just want to run through a quick example showing what could happen if you don't do that. And so here's a second illustration of the same problem, except for now we've reversed the direction of VC relative to B. And so now you'd be making the assumption, well, I know it lies along that construction line. Um, that construction line was this line right here. And so you know it lies along that line, but here, instead of initially thinking it went down, you thought it went up, which is fine. You'll catch the, the error, uh, but let's just see how that plays out real quick. And so the first part, um, you start off with the, the same path, and so you're thinking I'm going to work this vector equation using lines to represent the individual vectors. And so the first vector I always start with is my known vector. And so I've got V sub B. And so that's going to be the exact same process as here. So I'll grab this and this and move it over here for us. And so I've got the V sub B. And now I move over to V C relative to B. At this point, I think it moves up and to the left. And so I would do the same thing. I would get a line going here. I will draw the line parallel to this line segment associated with the arrow because I've already found out that the arrows are pointing in the right direction. And so I'll just use parallel to snap to it. And there's our snap. Um, here I don't really know the magnitude, so I'll go 10. And then I will move it. And I'm thinking now that the tail is down here and the tip is at the other end of the line segment. And I put that here with the other vector V sub B. And so this, again, at this point I would be thinking that is VC relative to B. So I'll move this over here. And so now I go to the next vector, the resultant of the sum of these two vectors. And so as usual I'm going to come in here, I will start my line tool. I need it to go parallel to, excuse me, V sub C. It's about to focus in on the wrong vector arrow there. And so this guy, and so I'll click the parallel, hover over it so I can snap to that parallel to that line segment. There's the snapping. I'll go 10 here. And now I'm assuming that it's going in the downward and left direction. So um, in this case, we would just move this line segment from this point, And it's got to always start here at the tail of my first vector, just by vector addition. And so at this point, I think that VC relative to V is pointing up this way. 
and I think that VCB is pointing, or excuse me, VC, let's get the identifier over here, is pointing down into the left. And so again, I have to think of where are these things going to intersect. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Um, one way is they would intersect going this way, or they'd intersect coming down here. Um, in this case, the only way that these two line segments will intersect is it down here in this region down in here. And so what that means is that this one has to be in the opposite direction. If I keep going up the opposite way, then these line segments are just going to get trending farther and farther apart. I suppose another way you could do it is you could come in here and go to a construction, and I could draw a quick construction lines. So these are just infinite lines, and I just need to capture the direction. And I could do something like this. Now I'm covering up those velocity lines with the construction lines, and you can see they're only going to intersect down here. What that's meant is that I need to reverse the direction of VC relative to B in order for this to work out, uh, which is fine. Um, I can just come in here. I'll close off of that. Uh, here I'll make another line segment here, and I'll snap here, and I want it to be parallel to you. So I'll just come down here, wait till it snaps to parallel, just like so. Now I'm basically extending the VC relative to B line. I'll move it over, bring this down here, and then I can do the same extension of my VC line here. And then trim out the unknown bit, or the unnecessary bit there. And now I've got the, the same general shape as the first vector triangle over here. And so we should be able to check these line segments. We should end up the same values, roughly 3.47 here and 26.51 there. And so that's just a case that you might end up seeing is if for some reason you assume the wrong direction on, in this case, just one, but I could have assumed wrong on both of them. You just need to look at where these line segments are going to intersect, and that will tell you the, the correct direction or correct sense, I should say, of the direction for the arrows way up here on the actual drawing itself there. And so hopefully that's making sense to you. Um, hopefully this will help you uh, solve some of your vector problems if you choose to do it in a graphical fashion. And so thank you for watching the video.